Uh, liturgy tonight, I was thinking particularly of the prayers for King Charles and all of the royal family. Yeah. And if I might make an observation, I noted that during the time of deepest mourning and tragedy, I noticed that he was, at least to me, he, his expressions, his demeanor, he was completely broken. And he said words and made promises or at least declared what he was feeling and he said it, I believe sincerely from his heart and at that time. And then I noticed straight away, almost from the day following, the BBC, on the first occasion I noticed, particularly through the royal correspondent um, uh, Nicholas Witchell, began to chip away at anything that he, that the King Charles might have expressed that we would say was positive. Immediately the, re the, the reporting was reminding us of all that King Charles would have said in the past, particularly to the oath that he might make in the coronation. And bit by bit, it was chipped and chipped and chipped away and chipped away and chipped away. I noticed that. And I've been exhorting some friends, some of them Anglicans, to really bring this matter of prayer for him to the forefront so that there might be a restoring and a working of grace according to the expressions that he made at that time. And I'm talking about now his, his appearances uh, as soon as it was possible to do so after the death of his dear mother. And I just make that um, observation and comment tonight because um, um, it just shows how that the evil one will do everything possible to get people's minds onto other things rather than what I believe is sincere praying to through to the throne of grace concerning his salvation. May, may I just also make this observation? When there would have been the days for his, I'm not necessarily saying now in chronological order, but when he was in the days of his um, confirmation, it happened to be at that time that John Stott was the Queen's chaplain, and, um, and I'm thinking back now of all that time ago, and one can only say as the situation was then, he would have had someone who was evangelical to lead him into essential things that he would, should be put to him when he was confirmed. And then, as I say, it might be before then, he was sent off to a school right in the outback of Australia. He was sent there, so we are told, that um, someone in his family would have sent him there, as it were, to harden him and prepare him for a role that was come. Now, the thing was this. Uh, because reports come back from the mission field, <sighs> In that place where he was, the only place that was the nearest place of worship, which they would have been sent to on a Sunday morning, was um, an evangelical mission station where they preached the gospel. 
We know about this because, you see, the, the, the news of that would have filtered down through the connection now of churches that would have been supporting that mission and eventually it filters through in South Wales and it filtered through to us. And I do know this, that there was a continuous going up of prayer for the salvation of one in those days we would describe as this dear lad, that dear lad. And I just mentioned that to say that sometime in the past there would have been that, certainly in Australia, there would have been that which was a sowing of the seed of the true gospel. And I, I take that on board and I say it because I believe that it's, a, it's, it's an encouragement to know at least as far off that has taken place. And in that day, there would have been a working of grace. And we trust that in these days and the days to come, there will be a work and workings of grace to answer every prayer that's gone up on his behalf. And I just wanted to say that tonight as a, a comment on being amongst you and reading the evening prayer this evening and we are here together. And I'm sure of this, even in speaking and sharing this together, the Lord is listening. The Lord knows. And everything that comes as an expression, I was going to say a sympathetic expression, a, a sharing together of a pathos that the Lord is sharing. And we trust in sharing. He will answer in spite of everything that is set against that dear man to take him the opposite way other than into and under, into the kingdom of God and the rulership of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now then, I must get down to our text tonight and um, I want to consider some things that may come up as a, a parallel to what we were thinking of this morning. We were thinking this morning of a natural conception by a natural means of the that resulted in the birth of John the Baptist. Now this evening, we are thinking, if I can put a sort of pun and play on it, we are thinking of a natural conception that's brought about by a divine means to bring about a natural birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the moment that there appeared, as it were, the Word made flesh to dwell amongst us. There was a time before he appeared, the moment of his birth, when he was there in real shape and form, just the same as would it be his, no, it would be her fourth cousin in line, I suppose, because Mary would be his, it was his cousin, Mary would have been um, the, the, the second cousin uh, to, to, to John the Baptist. 
And then there would, was it? No, there was a cousin, a second cousin, in that sense, a third cousin down the line, but it doesn't matter to get that kind of relationship right. But someone whose development in the womb was exactly the same as the development of John the Baptist. There, there might be one difference, and the only difference would have been that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, and there's evidence of the working of that whilst he was there in the womb in this six month before the Baptist was born. And um, perhaps we'll come to that when we get there later on in the meeting. But I've just um, I've spoken in that way thus far to, to, to speak of this, um, of this uh, uh, working. And uh, after thinking about these things, and, uh, <coughs> and I would have uh, considered them not just for the message tonight, but on today, but for some time, dwelling on these things, perhaps over a, yes, over a period of years, thinking about it. And when I read, or when I listened to what... Um, the Dr. Lloyd-Jones had to say in the, the part I referred to in this morning's message, it sort of, um, if you like, um, there was so much, as it were, of, of things that were complementary in as much as that they, that, um, they, they, uh, to me, <laughs> they developed the thoughts and the theme and uh, everything else. And uh, I found a comfort in that, you know, that's just how I found a comfort and encouragement. To it, not, 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 not many Sundays ago, um, or as a result, if you like, of receiving an email, um, not many Sundays ago. And um, if one can listen to that, um, uh, exposition of the doctor on, on that subject there concerning the child of promise to Abram, namely Isaac, then indeed, um, at least I found that very, very helpful and encouraging. Now then, let's get down to the matter of the word tonight. And then we read that it was in the sixth month, it says in verse 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city, a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. In the sixth month, in the sixth month of this period of gestation, when there would have been a development in her womb. I think that this is a very important point that comes out in, in way, way down the line. But in the sixth month of that pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God, as he was sent to Zechariah, unto the city of David, to a virgin, a spouse, to a man whose name was David. And then we read this, look. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, highly favoured. I think we can afford to leave out the words in italics here. Um, which are only put in, or they, just, they are put in by the translator to, to, to develop things, but there would have been this word, Hail, highly favoured of the Lord, highly, Hail, highly favoured, 
the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. That's what she said. And, and, and he said, and when she saw him, she saw him before the utterance, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. She saw him and she was troubled at his saying. And there's a very real sense here that her being troubled was not exactly the same as Zachariah being troubled. If I might say so, if I was to speculate, uh, speculate on anything, I, I, I just wonder what are the type of what are the kind of things that would have gone through Zachariah's mind. He was at the altar of burnt insects. And this happened. Just think of the offices for a moment. Was everything right on what happened before? Was there anything wrong with the sacrifice that caused him to be in that place and have such an appearance? Now I know this on that side is speculation, but you see, there were things that troubled him. Was it anything to do with him? Whatever it is. Now, I know we are going and speaking from silence, but I should not go down that road. But whatever it was, we saw this morning, he was greatly troubled. Mary was troubled. And she was troubled specifically on one point. The salutation. The words. What they meant. Hail. Greeting. Hail. We get down to the text. Hail. Highly favored. Certainly by that second phrase, highly favored. Highly favored. Causing her to trouble. The trouble was motivated by the knowledge of being highly favored. At least I believe that was the motivation. She was, she was, she was troubled at saying, hearing this. Hearing this greatly love troubled. The Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. <coughs> and when she saw him, she was troubled at his sailing and cast in her mind, and here is the operative word, what manner of salutation this should be. The manner of it. That was the thing that troubled her. And then the angel said to her, Gabriel said to her, Fear not, Mary, fear not, Mary. Settling her. Repeating something. Thou hast found favor with God. He was doing as much as was within him and the office that he had and the message that he had to carry and bring. He was doing himself as much as was within him. And remember this, he was in, the, in his being as an angel. He had nothing whatsoever to be able or enabled to appreciate the grace of God other than hearing that she was highly favored. And he had sensed to know that there was no highly or favor, there was no favor with God whatsoever except for grace. And he would never know it.
He had no need to know it. He was amongst those who never left his first state. And he was truly a being that had no need for grace. But he was doing all that he could in faithfulness to the one who had sent her, knowing the content of the message, knowing all that she had to bear and carry. He was acting as best he could to care for her, to care for her, to bring her on step by step that she might be prepared, and she was prepared for what? And all that he had to say and convey. And so he carries on. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And as soon as he mentioned Jesus, she would have known it as Yehoshua, the Savior of Jehovah the saviour of God's providing, of God's salvation. And it would have dawned on her by revelation even of the divine name. It would have dawned on her that she was chosen for this end. If things would have gone along normally and naturally without any intervention of this sort, she would have been amongst those who would have come into marriage and go through the process and wonder, is the one I'm going to carry is the one that Joseph is going to be the seed of. Is he to be the deliverer? That, that would have been the hope. That would have been what everyone was expected. They knew the prophecies. They knew that the promised one would come. And here was this announcement telling her but the promised one. I, I didn't intend all this parallelism with, with what I said about Isaac. But the seed, according to the promise, was to come. And a seed was to be sown to bring it to pass. Or is it a, a seed was to be fertilized? To bring it to pass, I'm not like you can see, I'm not a real expert on that. I'm just thinking of the first thing that comes to one minds now as, as one comes here. Because I tell you what, you don't get this stuff in the study. Anyway, here she was. And you know what? She was absolutely ready for it and prepared. Absolutely ready for it and prepared. And you see, on this, the the, the AV, the King James Version, is absolutely on the dot, on the dot. Here, let me move on to that so that I can get there. And so it goes on, right? We know it goes on, all that's in 32, look, all in verse 33. And then it ends up then, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
If we will be of the house of David on the throne of David, if I could go through it all now, and then and his, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then this is this is what we get to. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Read your NIV. How can it be? What is that doing? Putting a doubt into the question, and there's no there's no doubt in the question at all, because there's no doubt in her heart. How can this be? And if I might say it uh, in simple uh, terms about this, when she heard this, she was concerned. I don't know if it's the right word to bring in this, but I've, I've already spoken it sometime in the past. She was concerned about the mechanics of the thing. How, how is it going to be? Because I know not a man. She had known from the first time that she had ever understood anything of the Holy Scriptures. Whoever was the teacher who taught her, she would have known that there was a time when Adam and Eve knew, knew, Adam knew Eve. And she was in the place. An unmarried woman. A pure virgin. How shall this be? No doubt in her mind whatsoever. How shall it be? And you know what this speaks? This to me conveys the matter of will. And willingness. Willingness. No matter what it is. No matter what it is, is expected of her, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And from that question, he proceeds. The angel of the Lord answered and said to her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see, he could move on. And he's moving on. I was going to say with confidence. Perhaps he's not moving on with confidence. He's just moving on in the process of, 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 of answering the question and, and, and showing the, 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 the result of, of and, and, and moving on. And he shall be called Son of God. Not son of Adam, not son of Joseph, but son of God. And the whole emphasis here is upon sonship and whose son he is and what is the sonship. The sonship is that of the Father. Oh, beloved. If we were in Hebrews chapter 1, let's, let's get in Romans. There's no definite article in Romans related to this. Born of the seed of David and declared to be, no article, son of God with power by the resurrection from the, de by resurrection from the dead. And the declaration there is sonship as it is in the very beginning of Hebrews. Oh, beloved, what a thing it is. If I can put it again, what, what knowledge is this? What, oh, I, can't, what, 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 I haven't got the words to say. What expressions. I was going to say expressions of spirituality. I'm getting all the wrong words. Trying to say what 
Oh, perhaps this is a little bit better, a little bit better. What revelation of spiritual truth, holy spiritual truth, divine spiritual truth. Divinely endorsed spiritual truth. And the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, leading and guiding us into all the truth. And by that grace, bringing to us, taking of the things that are Christ's, and revealing unto us. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And look at this now, look at this in 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. Here was the opposite spectrum. A woman who was exactly opposite to old age. Um, if they say that 33 years of age or something about that is right to be in the, you know, the, the, the right time of life, She's well before 33 years of age. Here she is at the opposite end of the spectrum to Elizabeth. But also, also, the words also are very important. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And my simple way of looking at the English is this, that uh, it's also conceived. And if it's also conceived, there must be another conception for there to be an also in the sentence. I marvel that I can say these things. I tell you why I, I left school at 14 years and started working at 14 years and two months old. Did very thing of grammar, you know. Don't go down that road now, but just it's here. It is also. And I believe that also means, means also. And nothing else but also. And you can't have an also without one and another also. I suppose it's grammatically impossible to have the one without the other. And the grammatic, and the grammatic form is absolutely correct. This is inspired. Luke has been sorting it out and choosing it and... Uh, uh, finding from somebody else exactly, 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 exactly what certainly happened. Who decided it happened instead of happened? I can tell you where I come from and where I've been on the way. You see, also conceived. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Oh, see. Do you know what this was? Encouragement to her. This has happened to Elizabeth and it's encouragement to her, if I could put it like this simply, a step along the way. A step along the way. And who should it be of the choice? It would be something if it was uh, no relationship at all. But when it's in the family and working in this way, it's just one of these added things of encouragement. And God in his sovereignty and in the wonder of his eternal purposes has chosen to work this way.
solely out of grace, the God of all grace, all grace, working by his grace. Oh, encouraging her as much. Blessed be God. <coughs> Blessed be God for the encouragement that we've had tonight. And listen, I, I don't want to focus on myself. Right, 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 right. But you wonder. I wonder. I've been wondering today. The Lord was bringing us along this morning. And I've been wondering about the bringing us along tonight. Not that you're always looking for something better to be added. But how are we going to go tonight? Trusting the Lord to be gracious. Once again, do you know what I thank God for? I thank God for his graciousness that has been with us, I don't know for how many years, when by his grace and his providing and opening and all his workings have caused us to be an encouragement one to another. It seems to be the, the same theme tonight. Causing us to be encouraged, if only to see that for this dear young woman, oh, there was encouragement. And she was off to see Elizabeth. Oh, and what happened when she saw Elizabeth? A great deal of woman, not for a, a, a great deal of encouragement from a young woman to an old woman who was already, already so thankful to God. I just wonder what it was like to find that her cousin would come along with great news. And she might have been even wondering, how am I going to break the news? Elizabeth would have been wondering, how am I going to break the news? At least we're told she hid herself for five months. For whatever reason, not willing to break the news. The news had already got out about Zechariah. And if I could just mention something on his dumbness, the, the, the word there in that part, you know, when the angel came to him was this, thou shalt be silent. And it's not in a passive tense. Do you know what it's in? It's in, it's in the, let me think of it. Oh, dear me, I've forgotten it. The grammatical term. It's, oh, it's not a comparative. It's, oh, I've forgotten the, gra the grammatical term. It's not what me worry on about it. But what it means is this. Thou shalt be, my way of translating the present continuous is this. The participle, the participle, the participle. It's a participle. Thou shalt be silenting. And you know, on Zechariah's part, there was a willingness to be silent. And Zacharias was silenting. It's a present participle. He was silenting all the way along. 
until the moment he need not be silent any longer. And he had permission. All the means working around to give up being silent. I won't say anything more about Zachariah now. I'll be off the point. I'm losing myself. If I can put it like that. And you see, Mary said, Behold the hand, and she's speaking to God. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And she knew that the word that Gabriel uh, most, most, the, the, the word that he brought was the word that he was told to say, the word to convey. And she it said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. I suppose that's a respectable phrase. The slave, the willing slave, the handmaid of the Lord, and the angel departed from her. He went as quickly as he came because what he had to convey had taken place and more than that as well as words that were spoken a divine encounter had taken place in the place and there was a very beginning of one Come forth, whom John writes of us, the Word made flesh to dwell among us. And Mary arose in those days. <coughs> oh, she might have. Taken a few days to get over it. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. Oh, do you know what this tells us? It tells us she went as fast as her legs could carry her and if she happened to be riding a donkey, she would be prodding him on, encouraging to get her there. She went with haste, whatever way she went, on foot or by four legs, she went with haste. She went with haste. This was the effect. She went with haste into the hill country, uphill. Holloway, and entered into. Do you remember I spoke of these double prepositions? Yeah, another ice, ice, right? Compounded in the verb and 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 and, and the preposition after it, and um, and entered into. We got right to turn for me to see it clearly, and and entered into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zechariah and 
saluted Elizabeth, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, just the same as she had heard the salutation of the angel, a different salutation, yes, but as soon as the salutation came, the babe in her womb leapt. The babe leaped in her womb. Oh, I inquired of a dear lady at the function we went to the other day. I said, tell me, I said, and I was thinking perhaps ahead. Oh, at least that. Oh. It wasn't so much in preparation of this, it was in preparation for someone else. In the sense that I came to a point in grammar where I had to give up teaching grammar. I said to the man, I said, look, uh, we can learn lots of things, I said, that uh, don't happen very often, you know, and this and the other and, and, and the things that are scarcities, if I can put it like that, in, 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 in the Greek text, don't uh, come up very often. And I said, the best thing you and I can do, I said, is to, is to do some translation. And we started in the beginning of Luke. And it's been all preparation for, for today thus far and whatever will come in the days ahead. And the thing was this, the babe left in her home. See, she would have known, I understand from early on, some kinds of flutterings. That's how she described it. And then she would have known, the last few I didn't ask my wife. I would just happen to be in the function where we were all sat together and to see an opportune moment. And um, uh, I, I told her why, uh, why I was asking. And um, he would have kicked around, or at least he would have moved. But you see this day, there was something different. The salutations made. It went in through her ears. And somehow, if it wasn't sounding physically uh, with the right phonetics, uh, certainly spiritually in the working of the Spirit, the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit in the working, there was a physical movement by a Holy Spirit motivation. And the babe leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For as soon as, let me get it right, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Oh, she knew the grace, speak of it as the fruit. There was this motivation of the Spirit, there was the moving of legs with a leap, a physical leap. And it was a physical leap because of a Holy Spirit motivated leap within the Baptist in the womb. And he leapt for joy and thus sparked off a coming under the control of the Holy Spirit. He was under the control of the Holy Spirit in the womb, and here was Elizabeth coming under 
the control of the Holy Spirit. I believe when you speak of that as referring to the Holy Spirit, to me it does more than gallons of gallons of water being poured into a glass to fill it and it's running all over the place. At least that's to me. And I'm sure it does to you. Under the control of the Holy Spirit, she speaks out to Mary. And blessed is she that believes for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. That's where I put the Amen. But, oh, beloved, this would come. And Mary said, and she begins her song. This is after the Amen of the servant. Sermon, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. Forgive me coming back to some parallel. We spoke about the joy in the womb. And now there's a joy in the spirit of the other mother to be. You see, beloved, there's these actions and reactions. It's right to say this. We know amongst us of actions and reactions. And this is the way that the Lord is building us up, reinforcing us. And I've got to say it, reinforcing you. I'll say it. For your benefit, reinforcing you to continue to do your part in the witnessing of these things, even as he speaks to me to continue to do my part in the days that are left as long as I have breath to breathe and a voice to proclaim. Now then, Amen here means Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. I think there's a concluding prayer uh, now, and give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our gracious God, we, we, we wonder at the wonder of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank Thee that He was conceived by the Holy Ghost and born of the Virgin Mary. We thank Thee that He came into the world to save sinners. And we thank thee for the wonder of this coming into the world and the relationship with his mother and his uh, cousin, his cousins, Lord. We, we thank thee for this glorious hearing of thy word. We, we pray, Lord, thou would still our hearts, uh, grant us rest and peace this night 
grant us, Lord, to be continuing to trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, being found in him. Lord, and though we would have a fear of such an angel coming to us, we thank thee that the Son of God has come to us by the Spirit of God, granting us faith in him, that we may know the forgiveness of our sins, that he came as a babe, but to be fully man and to die for sinners and to redeem us uh, from all our sin and the hell that would be before us and to grant us his entrance into his heavenly kingdom. We thank the Lord that he reigns, that he is the Lord of glory. And we pray, Lord, keep thy people. Keep thy people in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Uh, lift up our hearts, Lord, in our sorrows as we consider how unworthy we are to be called thy servants, to be called thy people, to be priests and kings with God. Uh, we thank thee, Lord, for thy grace. We thank thee for our brothers preaching. Keep him and his wife tonight on their journey home. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep each one. Keep thy people, Lord, that we're not able to be out today because of sickness. Bless those that are here online and uh, hear the good news. Lord, may it be that at this time of year even, it's the same in some ways as any time of year, but this, this, this the bright lights and the festivities, may there be a preaching of the gospel that gets to the heart of man, that sees himself, that is not satisfied, sees himself ever uh, striving from things of this world, and yet there is from God, the glory of God, the kingdom of God, the salvation of God, the knowledge and love of God uh, to those that become the people of God by thy grace. O oh Lord, may we look to Christ, Christ born, Christ that lived, Christ that gave himself as our Saviour. May we look unto the Saviour that is born, the Saviour that died, the Saviour that risen, the Saviour that reigns, and the Saviour that's coming again to judge the world, to deliver us out of this evil world into the new heavens and earth wherein righteousness dwells. Lord, may we be prepared. Keep us from evil and temptation. Help us through our troubles and trials, we pray. Lord, bring us into if it be, we be brought into old age, or uh, we think of the difference of the ages here, of the two, the, the two women, the one past childbirth, the one not expecting, and this, these great surprises. Lord, we thank you that the gospel is the great surprise to each one who in this world will look unto him, who is given grace to look unto Christ. What a surprise that there is a gospel, that there is salvation there is hope there is joy and peace and wonder in believing lord build up thy church we pray not, not only in this place but throughout the world we thank thee that for the millions that love thee we thank thee for the great numbers we pray for our friends particularly tonight in burma who have many power cuts many challenges many difficulties uh, lord keep them uh, like thou will keep us lord in the knowledge and love of God. We pray now for thy blessing, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Is, is a letter from that uh, uh, chap from Africa.